Hi, I'm Heather Jo Flores, and today we are talking about all species gardening and or all species design, whatever you want to call it, if you want to call it permaculture, or if you want to call it taking care of the planet, if you just want to call it organic gardening, no matter what, no matter what approach you take, no matter how big of a scale you're working on, you are constantly interacting with animals, birds, bugs, and microorganisms. There are creatures and critters everywhere. And just like we're in relationship with all of the plants around us, we're also in relationship with the animals, the birds, the bugs, the microorganisms. And just like our other relationships, it's up to us whether those are functional, healthy relationships or dysfunctional and toxic relationships. I just wanted to talk a bit about the interconnected relationships that we share with these multiple layers of creatures everywhere we go, and then lead you through a bit of a meditation where you can lay back and close your eyes and journey with me through these layers of amazing, beautiful, and interconnected creatures. Before we jump into the meditation, I want to talk a little bit about all species design and what that means to me. And to me, the fundamental significance of saying that at all species design or all species gardening is that we place ourselves in relationship with the system not as masters or lords of it but we find our position in the multiple layers of relationship so sometimes maybe we're predator and sometimes maybe we feed other creatures sometimes we're serving the plants and sometimes we're making decisions on their behalf so striking that balance between controlling and relinquishing control i think is a big part of the all species awareness and for me that is one of the most inspiring parts of the ecological design or permaculture journey is that we get better and better at cultivating this awareness so for example I wanted to share a story about uh, back in the day, I lived at a farm in the Willamette Valley outside of Eugene, Oregon, and we grew tons of stuff there. There was acres of fruit trees and filberts and bamboo and a lot of different things going on on the farm. And then we had our little bit that we were renting. It was just like this beautiful south facing slope and like 15 feet of sandy loam. And as you can imagine, there were a lot of different creatures that would pass through. There were deer, there was the neighbor's cows, there were rabbits there were lots of different kinds of birds we had our own flock of different kinds of birds we had our own dogs and cats and and there were lots and lots of gophers and the gophers would take a substantial portion of our harvest on the regular most especially root crops those juicy beets and carrots and the yacon i mean they would just wipe it out you know and the first first couple of crops were kind of very frustrating and And we, um, so we just decided to start planting more. We didn't really know what to do. I mean, we weren't going to shoot them or poison them or kill them. We did, you know, we're kind of too soft for that, I guess, at that time. And even now I can't imagine doing that. And so we just were like, okay, well, let's plant the tender stuff in gopher baskets, like essentially very small wire. And you just, you know, that's what we did for the artichokes and the new fruit trees that we put in to protect them. But you kind of can't do every vegetable in these baskets, right? So with the other stuff, we just planted lots of it and tried to plant stuff that maybe they don't like in between. So, you know, we tried these biological controls and we just kept trying different things and they took less and less of the harvest. They still would take a significant portion, but they weren't taking all of it now. So, okay, that's great. Meanwhile, as we're getting more harvest, we don't really, we're not really good at storing stuff. You know, there's a lot of, uh, you hear, oh, build a root cellar, but it's like, who knows how to do that? Or who has the resources to do that? You know, we're just renting on this farm. Okay. Are we going to build a root cellar? And we also didn't have a refrigerator. So we were trying to figure out how to store these root vegetables and kind of failing a lot. They were, there was a lot of mold and, uh, you know, rodents getting in and eating them or just bugs. I mean, it was not ideal at all. And, and, or they would just get like kind of shriveled and gross. Like, um, you know how potatoes get when they've been sitting around too long, they sprout, right? So, um, Okay, so we're struggling with how to maintain, how to preserve our abundant harvest. And sometimes we have a lot of gophers. Okay, so that's the setup. So then one day we're out there and we're digging a line of holes kind of halfway down the slope so that we can plant a line of raspberries. And so we're digging these, you know, just little kind of pocket holes and and we're putting gopher baskets in for the raspberries, right? And suddenly one of the holes, when we dig, there's like packed in perfectly neatly like this, rainbow layers of 
a lot of our root vegetables that we had grown, beautiful beets and carrots and potatoes layered in, grouped like with like, in this root cellar, essentially, that the gophers had built in the side of our sandy loam farm slope. And they were beautiful. They weren't shriveled up at all. They were really well preserved. And so, of course, in that moment, we thought that was amazing. And we stole the root vegetables back from the gophers. And um, and then we realized that we could actually build like a very simple kind of root cellar just by creating a box. And then we lined that with wire and insulated that and then put our vegetables in there. But this is just a, an antidote to share with you in that we didn't make the gopher our enemy. We, uh, we've we tried to figure out how to coexist. And as a reward, it taught us something uh, that we really could employ. It taught us how to solve a different problem. And that was amazing. So it was all this sort of interconnected learning experience. And I love sharing that story when we talk about animals because we didn't bring the gophers there. And even if we had taken in a very aggressive stance. There's no way we were going to get rid of all the gophers. <laughs> Good luck with that. So, so that was, you know, a lesson and, and a journey for us. So with that in mind, the moral of the story, from the cockroach to the most magnificent eagle, they're all here for a reason. And some of it has nothing to do with us. Just like humans don't own the planet, we don't own the creatures on the planet. And and that, again, is, the, is what that all species perspective to me comes from. I think that therein lies our salvation as a species, is when we can put ourselves on equal ground with all of these species, even in the moments when we don't recognize their value. It's it's sort of the same as if we can put ourselves on equal ground with other humans, even in the moments where we're not feeling it for them. So, without any further ado, I would like to move into the meditation portion of our video.